Hey guys, John B here from Phone Reno. Right now you're watching our video review of the Pantech Discover for AT&T. It's available right now. You can actually pick it up for $50 to your contract. So it's super affordable in that aspect. And it's really mainly contending against some of the big name smartphones out there in the industry, like the LG Optimus Gs, the Samsung Galaxy S3s. It's a pretty big in the specs department. You have a large 4.8 inch HD display on there. You have a dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, 4G LTE connectivity, and a 12.6 megapixel camera in the rear. It has also a very peculiar looking design so there's a lot to like about this guy, especially the price point. So how does it fare out? Let's find out in this review of this handset. We've really got to give some props to Pantech just because the Discover is an appealing looking handset, very different from the crop out there, so it has its own unique look. We like how it's very curvy, especially in the rear. You could kind of tell how it slopes inward, down, and around the sides. It gives it a very distinct appeal to it. And by today's standards, it's still fairly streamlined. The construction's okay too. It's all plastic. Uh, you have like a chrome trim around the sides, and the back cover has a very textured, rubbery plastic uh, surface to it. So it does a good job in, in terms of holding in the hand. And, um, it's still unwieldy though due to the sheer size of the display, but for the most part, it's a refreshing design that we haven't seen from Pantex Camp. So with this beauty of a smartphone, you're also getting an equally attractive display. It's a 4.8 inch 720p LCD display, 720 by 1280 pixels, producing a pixel density of 306 pixels per inch, which is pretty good actually, um, especially noticeable in the web browser. When you're looking at it from a zoomed out view, we're able to still make out some fine text, even the tiniest of text more than legible. The LCD panel produced some very natural looking colors. The viewing angles, not the best out there. You could tell it kind of fades away and it's overall brightness output's not as strong as we'd like, so it's still kind of a little bit difficult to view in outdoor conditions, but we definitely like the, the uh, detail with it. Above the display, you have just the earpiece itself, you have the uh, light and proximity sensors, and to the top right, you have the front-facing 2-megapixel camera for video chat and self-portraits. It has the ability to shoot videos only in WVGA resolution and lower. Along the top edge, you have the 3.5mm headset jack. You have a notch there to remove the back cover and you have also a dedicated power button it's a little bit offset from the middle um, it has some decent feedback but the feel of it it's kind of indistinct along the right edge of the phone it's mostly clean except for the right speaker that's placed towards the top well, on the left edge, we spot the other speaker right there, and you have also the volume control nearby. It's a little bit indistinct to the touch, but at least it has a responsive feedback when pressed. And finally, the last thing we find on the bottom edge is none other than the micro USB port for charging data connectivity. Meanwhile, in the rear, we spot a very odd megapixel count camera. It's actually a 12.6 megapixel autofocus camera in there. Uh, it has an LED flash and the ability to shoot 1080p videos. You also have another microphone right there as well. Yes, it could be a hassle at times, but in order to get access to its uh, micro SD card slot, you got to remove the back cover. You gain access to that itself right there, but you still have to remove the 2100 milliamp hour battery. And nearby, you have the nano SIM slot as well. At first glance, it doesn't look like Pantech has changed much of the experience here with the Discover. It's very similar to other recent Android smartphones from their camp, uh, but it's actually running the same customized Android experience on top of Android 4.0.04 ice cream sandwich. Uh, so it brings over some things like the uh, user experience, the optional user experience. You have either the easy one or the standard fanfare. The easier one just uh, lessens the complexities of Android. It really dumbs it down, and you have also the standard experience, which is this guy here and it still has a very cartoony look with it but there's one new feature that we really appreciate uh, on here and it's very similar similar to what we see with the multitasking aspect in the Galaxy S3 and even the Optimus G so when you're playing a video you can actually minimize it so it's overlaid on top of something else so you could really use that to your advantage when it comes to multitasking you could actually watch the video and also surf the web at the same time with the spacious confines of its large display, uh, the type of experience is, isn't that bad at all. We definitely like the spacious layout it has to offer. Very responsive too, though it would have been nice to have some numbers and even some punctuation uh, integrated with some of the buttons on the main layout, but instead you have to go to a secondary layout to gain access to that. Naturally, the web browsing experience on the Pantech Discover is pretty superb just because it features 4G LTE connectivity. If you're in an area that has it, you're going to get fast data speeds. And with its high resolution display, it's very detailed, even with fine text. And you can tell with navigational controls and even its rendering, it's pretty much instantaneous. Well, there's nothing too flashy about the music player on the Discover. It's pretty generic with its, uh, with its presentation. 
You have the album cover, the on-screen controls and whatnot. And just like the video player, you can actually minimize this. So you have a mini player overlaid on top of whatever you're looking you're doing. Um, as far as the audio quality with its two speakers, it's decent, but loudest volume setting, it tends to have a little bit of a strain coming out of it. For the most part, there's no issues when it comes to playing high definition videos, except for the fact that its colors tend to be a little bit on the reserve side, so it doesn't have that, uh, that attraction factor with it. But regardless of that, it still plays video smoothly, like the one we have here, which is encoded in Divix 1920 by 1080 resolution. In addition to that, it also supports other things like H.264, MPEG-4, and even XVID. Some more impressive thing for a device of this caliber, it features a 12.6 megapixel autofocus camera in the rear and even the number sounds are very nice, the results aren't that astounding. With uh, outdoor shots with good lighting, it's good enough for uh, 4x6 printouts but for larger ones you could pretty much forget about it just because details tend to be a little bit on the muddy side and you tend to also notice some over sharpening um, and also doesn't handle dynamic range that well, it tends to overexpose brightly lit areas. And meanwhile lower lighting conditions of course uh, the uh, the uh, details kind of uh, take a hit downwards. You notice more graininess, softer tones, and the colors are more subdued. And the flash is good only up to five feet away. Anything more than that, it proves to be ineffective. At the same time, there's nothing much to say about the uh, 1080p high definition video recording quality. Now, it might look nice here on the video, but when we look at the computer, it is extremely muddy and ugly looking. Uh, details are pretty much out the door. It kind of reminds us of a cartoon, to tell you the truth. Details are pretty much drowned out. We do like the audio recording. It's clear, but there's a lot of uh, artifacting going on when you're panning very quickly. But it does shoot at 29 frames per second. Call quality is pretty good for the most part. Uh, voices on our end line is pretty much distinctive, but the earpiece itself, it's strong, but we tend to notice a little bit crackle at the loudest volume setting. On the other end line, callers didn't have any issues on their side, and when we switched to using a speakerphone, we gotta say it is extra loud, super loud in fact, uh, and it does have a little bit of crackliness towards the loudest volume setting, but still more than audible. Luckily, we didn't experience any drop calls with the Pantech Discover, nor did we see any fluctuation with its signal strength. Now, we tested out the Pantech Discover mainly with HSP Plus connectivity, and with its battery life out of its 2100 mAh battery, battery, it's pretty much average. We easily managed to get through a solid day of normal usage, but at night, it's still something that you're going to require charging, but if you're in an area that has 4G LTE connectivity, you expect the battery drain to be significantly more. Seriously folks, if you're strapped for cash and you still want a sweet Android powered smartphone, you ought to look at the Pantech Discover just because there's a lot of value found with it, especially at $50 a tier contract. Now it might not perform as handsomely compared to some of the other uh, top tier smartphones out there in the market, nor might have the feature set compared to them, but regardless of that, there's a good balance here. You have a nice HD display, 4G LTE connectivity, and one very appealing and stylish design that's very distinctive, so it has that going for it. So if I'd like to learn more about the Pantech Discover guys, you can check out our website, phonearena.com. It's John V. Thanks for watching.